Welcome to Hue Saturation 2.0 and trust me, you're going to be so, so impressed with this. Check this out. Let's say you want to change the green in the shoes. All you have to do is to click on Adjust Colors, brand new. It automatically shows the color palette of the image. It's customized. You click on the green right there and you can change it to whatever you wish. Change the saturation of that, the hue of that different color. You can even make it black if you wish to. This is so darn easy. Now you might say, Unmesh, we could do that with hue saturation, right? Well, not really. Have a look at this. So here's the older version of Photoshop. First of all, you don't have adjust colors here in the contextual taskbar. Secondly, even if you choose to add a hue saturation adjustment layer like so, and if you choose to pick green from the dropdown here, even if you try to change the hue, nothing happens. Just this area changes. Even if you try to change the lightness, nothing happens. You would have to go in right here, try to adjust that and maybe like this, and maybe then it would work. But with the new adjust colors, it automatically detects the top six prominent colors in your image specific to your image. Now, before you rush to try this feature, know that this feature is right now only available in the beta version of Photoshop. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it's in the regular version of Photoshop. But for right now, if you want to install the beta version of Photoshop, you need to go to your Creative Cloud desktop app, go to apps right here, scroll to beta at the top, and from here, install Photoshop beta. Keep in mind, Photoshop beta is a completely different application than the regular version of Photoshop. A lot of people get confused. So here, as you can see, this is my regular version of Photoshop and here, this is Photoshop beta. Now I'm gonna give you a little warning, be a little careful with the beta version of any program. Now the new adjust colors is fine, but how does it affect the regular hue saturation adjustment? Let's take a look. By the way, if you're not able to see the contextual taskbar right here, if you have hidden it like so, just right click on the outside of the canvas and click on show contextual taskbar. Or alternatively, you can also go to window, scroll down, and make sure contextual taskbar is checked so that you see it. And anytime you have a layer with the graphics selected, it will show these options. Even if you have an empty layer selected, it will still show these options. Now what has changed with hue saturation is a lot of things. Let's get to it one by one. Let's say you were to create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing hue saturation. There's a lot of new stuff to cover. First of all, you don't have any drop down right now to pick the color, it's all visual. Let's say you wanna change the green right here, just click on where it shows green. You don't have the old drop down as you see in the older version like so. For example, this is the older version. You would have to pick green from here, but in the newer version, it's all visual. Let me switch to that. And as you can see here, all you have to do is to click on the visible green. No need to click on the text. And then let's say I wanna change the lightness maybe to something like this, but it's not properly doing that. Here's another change. Have a look at the range sliders. They have become bigger, easier to see. That's another update for us. So I'm gonna move it maybe slightly on the right hand side and that fixes it. Now you will notice one more change. Can you tell me what that is? Let me give you a hint. It has to do with these swatches. Can you tell me now? Look closely. Have a look at these swatches. We have changed the greens, right? We have targeted the greens and changed it to white here. So it shows the before and after. What it was before, which it was green, what it is after, which it is white. Although it's a bit grayish, but you get the point. Similarly, whatever swatch you target, it's gonna show you the before and after. For example, if I click on red, now there's a lot of things red here, but even if I choose to change the hue slightly like so, I wouldn't be doing that, but you get the point. You see the before and after here. Whatever changes you might have done. Let's decrease the saturation and change it like this. See, it still shows the before and after. Let's make a drastic change like so. We wouldn't be doing that, but have a look. Before it was red, now it is green. Now these were the default swatches with hue saturation, but what about detecting the colors from the image? Wouldn't that be cooler? Yes, you can do that. And it's not just limited to adjust colors. Even if you hide this, you will find the same technology inside of hue saturation. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Here in the preset section, click on the dropdown and pick prominent colors. It automatically detects the prominent colors in the image. So here's the skin tone, here's the darker areas of the skin, here's the blue in his hoodie that he's wearing. So let's say we pick this color, we can change the hue, saturation, and it's selected so properly. Maybe I'm going to select this one and maybe make it absolutely black. And it selects it all. 
so good. This would not be possible with the old hue saturation. You can also make it white. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Let me share with you how old hue saturation would react to this. So this is the regular version of Photoshop, which is not the beta. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. This is the older version. Here, even if you pick blues from the list, it's going to give you a little blues. When you modify the lightness, hue or saturation, it's not entirely selecting it. Let's try to make it black. It will not entirely make it black because it has not accurately selected that range of color. It's just selecting a default color. You would have to make adjustments like so, move this around to make this happen. But with the new one, one click, done. Now here's another problem with the older version. Have you ever seen the number two next to a target color? That can get very confusing. Let's say you moved the range a little bit too much to the right. Maybe like so. All right, let's not look at the image. Now you close this. All right, you open that again. Now have a look at the list. There is magentas and there is magentas too. And this can get very confusing. What did you make changes to? What do you want to make changes to? And with the newer version, let's switch to that. There literally is no such confusion. Even if you were to reset everything like so, and let's select the blues and you change the lightness like so, you move things here and there. And even if you moved it too much to the right, nothing changes. You can still see the before and after. What are you changing? Yes, I'm changing magenta in that swatch and I'm changing that to black. So there is literally no confusion here. Now let's talk about adjust colors in the contextual taskbar. Even if you were making changes with the contextual taskbar, it is absolutely non-destructive. Have a look at this photo. Let's bring in the contextual taskbar by right-clicking outside the canvas and choosing show contextual taskbar. And here, let's say you want to target the blues. So adjust colors, it automatically detects the prominent colors in the image and then this is the blue that I want to target and I want to change the hue, maybe like so, the saturation a little bit. Maybe I'm going to make it slightly brighter and slightly more saturation. This is fine. It automatically creates a hue saturation adjustment layer, which you can change anytime. So if you double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer here, see all of the changes you made here shows up right here, making it very easy to make changes later. So even if you were to create a text layer and maybe you wrote something and you can change the color of that right with the contextual taskbar here as well. Oops, I didn't select the text. So let's select the text, change it to maybe white, hit OK. You can always go back to the hue saturation adjustment and change all of these settings. And when you do open the hue saturation adjustment and if you click here, you will see those settings in the contextual taskbar too. So if you click on it, all of those exact settings will show right back up. I just want to give a huge shout out to Amy DeRocher from the Photoshop team for showing me this feature. If you want to learn more about this feature, she has written an article about it. I'll also link that in the description. Thank you so much, Amy. Photoshop is always changing and it's important we learn about those changes. I try to make it a point to always keep you updated. However, if you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond with updated courses and streamlined masterclasses that you won't find on YouTube, definitely check out PixImperfect Pro at PixImperfect.com. We have over 100 lessons which are constantly growing. We keep updating and adding new courses right now. We are working on a camera raw course which you can also watch. My only goal in all of the courses is to make you the master of concepts so you never have to memorize the steps. You make your own steps depending upon what your vision is. Let me know what you think of the new adjust colors and would you be using this in your day-to-day -day workflow. Do you think it's ready for the main version? Let me know and also let the Adobe people know in the comments. Hopefully if they watch these videos. Thank you for watching this one. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.